and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Teresa and I am doing knitting content here on this channel. Um, this week I have a podcast again for you and I want to share with you all the things that I have been working on. I also have a pretty standard format, so I'm doing finished objects, uh, whips and uh, acquisitions. Uh, for this month I have uh, one finished object, but it's not really finished because uh, it is one sock of uh, a pair of socks. Uh, I've been working on the riverbed socks by Joji Locatelli. And uh, she actually has this pattern in the 52 weeks of socks book, which I own and uh, which I'm trying to work through. I have finished this one and uh, I have uh, started on the second sock, but it's still a whip. This one I uh, knitted with Drops Nord uh, in the color Forest Green. Um, and it has a really nice lace pattern. I will try to show you properly. So this is the lace pattern that's on it. And it also has a part in the back uh, with a little bit of lace. It's the same lace as the front. Um, it is a really nice sock and uh, it is knitted on 3mm needles uh, instead of the usual 2.5 that I use. And also it is a short sock. So uh, this part is a little shorter than normal. Uh, so I felt like this uh, sock went by really fast. Um, I am knitting on the second sock, as I said, uh, but it's not that far. Um, I only did this part. Um, I only have to do like three rows and then I uh, can actually knit the heel, uh, knit the heel flap and uh, work on the foot. So uh, that's how this one is going so far. Um, I, I, I really enjoyed working on these. I think I said last podcast that these socks would stay in the whip pile for a while, but I actually enjoyed working on them uh, a lot. So uh, I kept working on them and uh, I finished uh, one of them and now I'm working on the second one already. So um, my prediction was not true and I think I actually will finish this one in a few days as well. Well, that actually was my only finished object uh, and also whip in one. Uh, so uh, I will continue with the whips that I have. My second whip is actually the Agnit cardigan, uh, which I have been working on religiously uh, almost every day. I have made so much progress since uh, last time. Uh, I will show you. It is actually almost finished. I'm working on the second sleeve. So this is her. And as you can see, I already uh, finished the one sleeve, I finished the whole body and also I'm now working on the second sleeve. Um, I'm using the Chiago shorties, which uh, are very nice to use for the sleeves because normally I would use uh, double pointed needles or magic loop. Um, but I really like working in the round uh, with circular needles. So uh, this was actually super fun to do. So this is actually um, has been the perfect set of needles to use uh, for the sleeves uh, when it's a 40 centimeter cable with my normal needles would not suffice uh, anymore. Also, as you may have noticed, I have added buttons to this one. Um, I wanted to use some white, uh, like white marble kind of buttons. And I went to a store here in Amsterdam uh, to look at some buttons. And they had like a whole wall of buttons and there was just so many buttons to choose from. But uh, I still went with my first choice, which I had in my head, which were white marble, marbled kind of buttons. And um, these are the buttons that I chose. I will try to get them a little bit more uh, sharp. And um, I already attached them as soon as I got them because I really liked them and I wanted to see what they would look like uh, on the cardigan. Um, uh, I also uh, already weaved in uh, most of the threads. So uh, I feel like when this one, when I finish the second sleeve on this one, I can just block it and wear it right away, uh, which is great. 
Also with this one, um, I feel like it's gonna be a little bit shorter than I would like. Uh, I will try to show you on me right now. Like it stops right here and I would like it to have it a little bit longer. So I really hope that I can block it in a way that it gets the right length. Um, especially because uh, I actually have two skeins left of both the sadness garn. Uh, Tin per gint and the drop skid silk, so uh, I would have had enough yarn to actually make it longer. But the thing is with this is that you actually had to make a choice when you started the button holes if you wanted to make it longer, and I chose not to. Which, uh, looking back, was not uh, not the best choice. But uh, I'm just gonna block it and manifest that it's gonna be perfect. Uh, as I mentioned, I used Sandness Bear Gint and Drops Kid Silk uh, for this one. The Sandness Garn is in uh, Moon Yellow and the Drops Kid Silk is in Vanilla. And uh, I feel like it's a really nice combination, but also I feel like the Drops Kid Silk maybe have made it a little bit more prickly. Um, because the Timper Gint already is uh, a bit prickly uh, and the Drops Kid Silk uh, really adds to that. Um, but I feel like if I wear something under it, it will be fine. I feel like it will be very cute. I can't wait to finish this and block this up. Um, it's just so gorgeous. And uh, also one other thing, I really enjoyed working uh, the double knitting. I feel like it's one of my favorite things about this pattern. And uh, I also really enjoyed the brioche. Uh, this is the first time that I did brioche uh, ever in my life, so uh, it was a process. I think um, when I first started this one, uh, I had to start over like three times because uh, every time I made a mistake in the first few rows. Uh, but then I got into it and, uh, and now there is, are still mistakes, but they're not that uh, noticeable, luckily. Um, also, uh, when I did a brioche flat for the body, um, I then had to do brioche um, in the round for the sleeves, which was also new. So I had to learn like the pearl rows, uh, how to do that one. Um, and also the increases and de decreases for brioche uh, were also new. Uh, so a lot of new techniques. It was really fun to learn a lot of new techniques because I'm always uh, here to learn something new. It's almost finished. I will uh, post a picture on Instagram as soon as it is finished. Uh, so if you want to see that one, you can uh, follow me on Instagram if you don't already. I think this, this has been one of the uh, funnest projects that I've done in a while. Um, I think mostly because of the yarn that I chose. So the Tin Per Gint was uh, a new kind of yarn uh, that I didn't uh, know about before and I really liked uh, the color and also the feel of it. Um, and also uh, what a fun element was with this project is that there was a cow that uh, I have joined, uh, which is the typical Bliss uh, Agnit cow where she streams every week and uh, we just make the Agnit cardigan together. Um, and it has really motivated me to keep up with the streams and, um, and just to talk about knitting and the acne during these streams. So I really recommend joining Cal's uh, if you want to keep motivated for a certain project. So yeah, I think that's all I need to say about the acne. I will give one final look. And uh, then I will just move on to uh, the second whip, which is cardigan number eight by My Favorite Things Knitwear. And uh, I've been knitting on the yoke for this one and a little bit of the body. And this is her. She curls up a lot, so I'm trying to give uh, a good look of her. So this is the front. It looks like this and this is uh, the back and uh, the yarn is so beautiful it also really depends on the light um, how the yarn looks because sometimes it looks a little bit more uh, like it has a purple undertone sometimes it looks really light gray uh, in some lights and sometimes it looks really dark 
but I'm really enjoying working on this cardigan as well. Um, I've been wanting to make this cardigan since the beginning of my knitting journey, but uh, I didn't have the perfect yarn for this one uh, in mind, uh, because uh, the yarn that they recommended, the Unling, which she uses for the cardigan that she wears in the photos, uh, is super expensive. And um, my original plan was actually to save up for it, but um, in the end I was like, it's just too much for a cardigan. Uh, I need to look at other options. And um, I did find something. I found the uh, Isager confetti yarn. So it's uh, this yarn. This is the wound it up version, but they do come in hanks. And uh, I wanted to use a nice mohair with it. And um, I didn't know uh, which way to go because I had uh, a drops kit silk, like a gray mohair still from uh, another project. Uh, but it was a little bit lighter. It was from drops kit silk as well. And uh, I was a bit done with the drops kit silk. Um, after using it already for the acne. So I wanted to use something else and I uh, looked at the other Isidure yarns. The Isidure Mohair I didn't really like for some reason. Uh, it also was a bit too expensive I felt like. Uh, but then I saw a project from someone um, I'm not sure of the name. I will try to look her up. Uh, she had a project on Ravelry and uh, she used the Isager Alpaca 1 uh, in the color 4S and um, her cardigan was just gorgeous. And uh, I just knew this is the perfect combination because I already have the Isager Confetti and um, the Isager Alpaca 1 will just be the perfect addition to that. Um, the Isger uh, Alpaca one, uh, I have it here, is not really a mohair, it's uh, more like a fingering, fuzzy kind of yarn. Um, but it, it really adds like a little bit of a grey glow over the cardigan. It's not that noticeable, uh, but it's some lights, you can really see it. And I feel like the purple undertone with this one fades uh, away a little bit with this one, uh, which is nice because I wanted it to be more gray than purple. Um, so it's actually uh, worked out perfectly. And also the alpaca is one of the softest things that I ever touched. So that is also very nice. This one uh, works up so fast uh, as well. It is worked on 5.5 millimeter needles. And uh, I did a swatch and uh, the gauge was perfect. So I just wanted to uh, try to do the back first to see how it would look like on a bigger, like on a bigger piece. Uh, then just the gauge swatch and then I was just so addicted that I just kept knitting and now I'm actually already this far. So uh, I think I only have 10 centimeters for the body left and then I have to do the ribbing uh, and then I can do the sleeves. For this one, um, I'm not sure what kind of buttons I want to use for this. Uh, I think it will be gray or brownish buttons. I'm not sure. I think I will go back to the um, button store and actually uh, put some buttons next to this one as well and see which one uh, would match nicely. Uh, but yeah, I'm so happy with the yarn choice uh, so far uh, because when I saw the picture, I really wanted to make it the same kind of cardigan. I thought the yarn that she used was perfect. Uh, it was just speckled um, in the right places and in the right way. Uh, and I wanted the same for myself. This yarn really provides that. So yeah, that actually uh, will be it for cardigan number eight. I think with how fast this knits up, it will be finished uh, very soon. And um, it looks just so nice on me. I already can see this on me and how it will look. And I feel like it would look so nice on me and I will just be living my best life in my little cute oversized cardigan. So can't wait for that to happen. Uh, and also this is my last whip. So we will go on to the acquisitions. And I actually bought uh, a few things again this month. So I have some stuff to show you. The first thing that I want to show you is a, a yarn winder. I finally got a yarn winder to wind some yarn because uh, I needed to wind the hanks for the cardigan number eight. And um, I just bought the cheapest one I could find 
uh, and it works perfectly. Um, also, I did not buy a Swift with it because I thought I could just use like household objects to work as the Swift. Um, and in a way it does work. I now use like two chairs and put them against each other and just put the hang around it and then I just stand above it and just wind away uh, and it works. I have now uh, done it three times with three of the hangs and uh, it worked out perfectly every time. I feel like this one uh, it's not the nicest yarn binder but it does its job and uh, that's all I need from it. Also it is uh, pink. It has pink on it which is one of my favorite colors so I'm very happy about that but yeah really happy uh, to add this to my knitting uh, accessories and uh, I will be using this a lot uh, in the future because I have uh, some more hangs that I need to wind uh, and now I can um, then another thing that I bought is actually some yarn uh, because I went to a yarn shop uh, in another city in the Netherlands, uh, it's called Utrecht and uh, I went there with some of the girls that are uh, in a knit club that uh, Lisa's knit club uh, set up um, and there's a whatsapp group and some of the girls organized a trip to Utrecht and um, I joined um, so we just went to knit in a cafe and uh, I worked on the cardigan number eight and after that we went to sticks and cups which is a yarn store there and uh, when I came in uh, and I saw this hang it was just calling to me I didn't really know if I uh, wanted to buy it right away because it was a bit expensive but uh, it just kept calling on me and I could not leave the store uh, without it so I did buy it and um, it is the Sock Sanity yarn from Mina Dye Works and uh, it is just the most gorgeous hand dyed yarn that I've seen in a while um, I will show you all the aspects so it has like uh, like a little bit, bit of a beige uh, base and uh, there are some uh, pinks and uh, some some reds um, also a bit more darker colors uh, like in here like a little bit more brown blackish um, and uh, just like speckles and stuff and it just looks so beautiful and um, I really cherish this one um, and then uh, I was looking for projects to make with this um, so I was um, going through the 52 weeks of socks book to uh, pick a project for this one but I don't know for some reason every time when I looked at a pattern I was like this pattern is not worth this beautiful yarn it has to be a more special pattern so uh, we'll see how that goes Maybe I'll just keep it and admire it and uh, when that special pattern comes along somewhere in the future then uh, I can use it uh, or I will just use it for some random pattern but uh, for now I'm just cherishing it too much to just uh, put it on a random pattern and I feel like uh, I need to feel the match between the pattern and the yarn uh, before I uh, going to wind it up and uh, use it for that pattern. So uh, we'll see, um, I will let you know when I choose the pattern and I feel like it will be the chosen one, it will be a whole thing, but um, yeah, we'll see. For now I'm just very happy with this yarn and uh, it's just so gorgeous to look at. Uh, so the socks I will be making with, with this will be so gorgeous. Uh, I think they, they will be my most favorite socks ever uh, already and I haven't even made them. So we'll see. Um, then the next thing that I bought is some yarn for my new project that I had in mind and uh, I talked about the zipper sweater a while ago and uh, it just uh, never left my mind and I actually decided to buy the yarn and all the stuff for it and uh, I didn't want to do it with mohair so I'm gonna do the zipper sweater light uh, by Petite Knit and um, the yarn that I chose for it is actually the Sanis Garn Peregint uh, in Jelly Bean Green so uh, it arrived last week this is the one and it's actually exactly what I want. Uh, 
I feel like on camera it is a little bit uh, less vibrant than it is in real life. But um, it is the Pear Gint from Sanis Garn and uh, I'm so happy with it. Um, I actually cannot wait to cast this one on but I did say to myself I need to finish one of my whips first before I cast on a new one. So, so that probably will be the acne cardigan that I finish and then I can cast this one on and I cannot wait because this yarn is just so cute and I feel like it would be such a cool sweater. Um, and I've been wanting to make something in a bold color for a while now and this is the first thing that I'm gonna do in a bold color. So uh, I'm also very excited to see how that uh, goes down. The, uh, also, I've heard a bit about Pear Gint that it can be a little bit prickly, but uh, that just means that I have to wear like a shirt under it at all times. So uh, I think it will be a great layering piece in spring when it gets a little bit colder. Uh, and then I can just wear this one. So um, yeah, it will be just used that way, I guess. And then in the winter, I already wear uh, t-shirts and long uh, t-shirts and blouses under my sweater. So then it won't be uh, no problem at all either. And with the Pear Gint, I also bought the official Petite Knit zipper that goes in it. So this is the zipper that I bought. It's the black one. And um, it has like a copper uh, zipper. Like the zipper itself is like a little bit of a copper color. I hope you can see it. And um, there is also a li little label that you can put in the project. So uh, I'm definitely gonna use that as well. One thing that I am worried about is that because the zipper is super black and the yarn is very bright, uh, that um, it's going to be very noticeable if the zipper is not covered up very nicely. So I really hope that I can cover up the zipper uh, as much as possible, that it's not that noticeable that this is a very black zipper on a green sweater, because I feel like that would not match very well. And uh, I have looked for zippers that would match better, but the place where I bought the zipper only had like a blue zipper, a black zipper and a white zipper, which all don't match. Um, so I bought the black one um, and I hope I can uh, just get away with it. As I have looked at other zipper sweaters uh, and zipper sweaters uh, light and uh, most of them you don't see the color of the zipper. So it should be fine. Uh, but we'll see if I'm going to be able to actually get it in right so you don't see it. Also, this is the first time that I have um, a tag, so I'm gonna uh, put a tag in for the first time, which I feel like makes it look a little bit more professional. So uh, I'm very happy about that as well. Um, but yeah, that's, that's it for the yarn and uh, zipper that I bought for the zipper sweater. And then uh, the last thing that I bought is um, some cotton yarn uh, and it's the Fildar, Fildar Fill Cotton Tree. And it is black yarn um, for the orange trousers by Le Poul. And uh, it is the mesh pattern that I also put in the pattern recommendations video of last week. Uh, and I just uh, could not wait. And I also had to order some yarn for that project as well because um, I wanted to be able to cast it on whenever I want. This is my first time ever to work with black yarn and I heard a lot of people say that it is very hard to work with because you can't really see the stitches. Uh, so we'll see about that. But um, I feel like uh, black would be the perfect color for these pants that I have in mind that would uh, look good on me as well. So uh, I had to go with it and um, also very excited to cast this one on as well. But I cannot keep casting on without casting off some projects. So I do have to wait. Uh, but I think um, when, I, uh, when I finish my second whip, so uh, I think I will do it like when I finish my first whip, which will be the acne cardigan, I can cast on the zipper sweater. And then when I finish the cardigan number eight, I can cast on this one, which is the orange trousers. So I think that will be like 
a good plan for me uh, to keep up with and uh, yeah very excited uh, about this one as well uh, so that's actually it for uh, the podcast um, and everything that I have been up to for the last month. Uh, knitting wise, um, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, also, I have acquired a new hobby. Uh, if you're interested um, uh, about it, I am doing a gel nails uh, now. Not in a way that I can actually um, make them longer and put like tips on it and, or an anything. I just bought a set with uh, a UV lamp and um, some nail polish and uh, like the nail fouls and the base coat and the top coat and the primer and everything. Um, and I bought some cute colors, so I will be experimenting with gel nails now. I just feel like I, I'm looking at my hands so much because I'm knitting all the time. That would be nice to look at something nice. So um, I want to have some cute uh, nails. Also for spring, I want to have some cute colors on my hands. And I feel like, uh, I, needed, like I needed something... Uh, something new in my life and uh, this was it for now um, Also uh, one other thing that I'm really into at this moment is uh, I want to run 15k this year I've never done that. I think the furthest I've run uh, is like eight eight points something kilometers uh, but uh, but I'm now training for 10 so I'm doing it three times a week and then um uh, after I reach 10, I will go uh, to till 15 and maybe after that even have a marathon. Who knows? Who'll say? Uh, but I'm very excited about that. I wanted to switch it up uh, a little bit. I really felt like I needed it and uh, it has been really fun until now. Uh, so yeah, I just want to share that with you uh, and this will be the real end of the video. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. If you enjoyed it, please give a like. Uh, and if you want to keep updated with me, please subscribe to the channel. Um, and uh, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and I will see you next time.